afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The College of Fine Arts and Department of Music are proud to present, under the direction of Dr. David Martinuk, the IUP Marching Band. Jesting, yeah, you people, Janey, Mike Ribna, Vince Lowry, what's going on? We have the band going on. Chris Barber, Stephanie Kapich, what's up? Hello, 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 this is Michael Ribna. Emma better have got me that t-shirt. If not, I will be very mad at Emma because I really want that really cool t-shirt. <laughs> the best band in the land, IUP. It's so warm and comfy, 74 degrees here and partly cloudy here in Indiana, Pennsylvania. The summer is about to end. Dog days are indeed over. The pumpkin spice lattes are coming out and the warm apple cider is drizzling down the cups. I'm Vincent Lowry here at George P. Miller Stadium in Frank Signetti Field. I'm joined by my good friend. Hi, folks. Michael Gribben. I'm happy to be back for another game of IEP football as your color commentator. You know, Mike, as we move into the last game before conference play, What's being established on the field and becoming the bread and butter of this IUP team is the backfield of Brown and Bullock. Yeah, Vinny, this dual, this dual threat tandem of running backs is establishing themselves as a powerhouse in the entire PSAC. If you take a look at these stats, Samir Bullock is number two with 282 yards, with, with Dewan Brown 140 yards at number 10, just behind number one Marcus Jones. And then let's take a look at the plays that established sophomore Samir Bullock and true freshman Dwayne Brown as the one-two punch of this backfield. Yeah, the first play you have right here, Samir Bullock cutting to the inside, grinding his gears, finding a way to get a first down for a beautiful 15 run, 15 yard run. The second one here, you have Dwayne Brown rumbling and bumbling, showing no fear, running over some defenders for a nice 15 yard run. And the third play, another run by Dwayne Brown going right up the gun, taking defenders with him, dragging them with his tree trunks he has for legs. And the last play is the first touchdown of Dwayne Brown's young career, the true freshman, right up the right side, not even touched for a touchdown. So, Vinny, who do you think is going to get the most touches today, Samir Bullock or Dwayne Brown? You know me, the man of the Dwayne of the Samir Bullock fan club. I'm taking Samir Bullock, hands down, you're going to get more touches today. <laughs> Mike, you will always pick Samir, no matter who's on the field, could be a professional NFL player. You're always going to go with Samir. I don't know, Samir had a rough game last week. Not necessarily rough, but Brown was on top. You know, Brown is on that high of his debut from last week, and I think Brown's going to take more touches for this game against Cheney. And actually, speaking of Cheney, Mike, actually moving on to Cheney, since 2012, they've beaten a PSAC team. The Crimson Hawks are 8-0 all-time against Cheney, including four shutout victories since 2012, and IUP averages 55.5 points in those four shutouts. Yeah, IUP has won 12 straight home games. The last game they lost was a cross-divisional opponent, Cootstown. They lost 34-33 in 2015. That was the last IUP loss, and IUP has never lost to Cheney in uh, eight straight games, and that comes from 2012. And moving on to one of our 
well-respected quarterbacks. Congratulations to Lenny Williams for IUP Athlete of the Week. He has been on a tear thus far this season, starting his 2017 campaign. The 2017 career season has been great for Lenny Williams. 513 passing yards, four touchdowns. He is third in the entire PSAC with a 63% completion rating. Lenny Williams is also one touchdown away from t uh, tying Hall of Famer Michael Mann for fifth all-time in the IUP record books for touchdowns. You know, after last week, uh, Dwayne Brown has breakout debut. Do you think Coach Tortorella wrote that down on his script and said, hey, maybe we could give another player a try on the draw? Do you think that's a time for this game? In a game like this, I would say yes. Cheney has not come in with the best record, so you might see Coach Tortorella put some of the younger guys in to get them some reps. But this could easily be a trap game for the Crimson Hawks. So if it's a tight game going neck and neck down the field, you cannot rest your starters. You play to win the game. You need to win the game first. Winning the game is always a top priority. Let's take a look at the keys to the game. Yeah, but my keys for success today is discipline. You cannot make dumb penalties. You can't get the 15 yards down the field for pass interference. You need to play smart. The second off, you need to run the ball. Like we said earlier, you have two of the best running backs in the entire PSAC. Use them to your advantage. And lastly, you need to come out of this game injury free. We have a long stretch of PSAC games coming up that you need to stay healthy for and you need your star players in those games to win. Thank you, Mike. IUP versus Cheney right here on the Crimson Hawk Sports Network. I'm Vincent Lowry. This is Mike Grivna. We'll be right back. The communications media and instructional technology PhD program gave my life direction. This program was perfect for me with a combination of research and media production. Hands-on courses gave me skills that I now pass on to my students. I use all three areas of the program, production, theory, and research, every day in my job as a college professor. Learn how the CMIT PhD program can change your life. Visit iup.edu slash CMIT. The environment is my passion. Every day, I live for the outdoors and all of its challenges. That's why I enlisted in the Coast Guard. Now, I serve to protect the environment and defend my country. It's like I was born for this. Were you born ready for a greater challenge? Find out at GoCoastGuard.com. Success, we see it every day. Hundreds of majors and programs, bachelor's degrees to PhDs, small classes, internationally known faculty who are committed to your success. Real world experiences to guide you on your career and life path, an alumni network 120,000 strong. I'm IUP President Mike Driscoll. Visit us. Find your success at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. George P. Mill Stadium and Frank Signetti Field. We have the matchup of IUP Crimson Hawks versus Cheney. I'm Vincent Lauer, your play-by-play -play commentator with my good friend. How's it going, folks? Michael Griffin up here in the booth with my man, Vincent Lowry. We're going to call one heck of a game here. So sit down, get the popcorn ready, and hope you enjoy the show. And they're sitting down to the field for the coin toss. You know what, I can't promise anything. You know, uh, you guys are the captains, embrace your roles as captains. Make sure you keep everybody on your team out of trouble so we don't have to do anything. Like I said, you guys have any questions today, we'll be glad to help you out. This is the coin, this is heads. 
and this is tails. Cheney, you're the visitor. You have the choice of heads or tails. Tails is the call. Step back. I'm going to let him out. Heads. The choice. You want to receive? I like to defend. Face your back to that goal. Turn and face your back. IUP Crimson Hawks have chosen to receive the ball to kick things off here at Frank George P. Miller Stadium. It's 11.57 here in Indiana, Pennsylvania. 74 degrees out. You know, they said it was comfy, partly cloudy, but Mike, it's sunny and it's warm. Yeah, Vinny, I'll be completely honest with you. I'm sweating a little bit. It is a little toasty up here in this booth, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I have my dress clothes on, my tie, you know, up here looking snazzy, but still, man, <laughs> what is the point of a break? <laughs> you know, this, this past two weeks, we've been kind of cold up here. I don't know about you, Mike. I mean, you've, you've been hot, so you've enjoyed the cold weather, but now we're pretty toasty up here, up in the booth. Oh, that week one night game versus Ashland, it was beautiful out. It was nighttime, it was about 62 degrees. There was a beautiful Maybe breeze. Maybe 50 degrees on that. I don't know about 60, 62. I don't, I don't, whatever it was, I loved it. It was nice, it was cool, calm, a nice breeze up here. You know, keeps me cool so I didn't get a big hot head up in the booth. But I am excited to see what our IUP Crimson Hawks can do against these Cheney Wolves. But I will not put it past quarterback number 15 for the Wolves, Dominic Trouts, the senior, 6'1", 200 pounds, to come out here and try to put a damper on the Crimson Hawks 2-0 start. Yeah, my IUP 2-0, but they've had trouble past two games with outside containment with quarterbacks, the scrambling, the play action. They've been having trouble with containing them. I mean, if Trouts can get around the outside and if the defensive ends and outside linebackers can't can't commit to the tackle, I mean, they're going to be in trouble. But, I mean, the IEP defense, they just keep dominating every single game. I mean, even at Ashland. I mean, we were down by seven. They blocked, blocked the field goal, and now we're back in it. So we're 2-0 here coming in to Cheney, and we are about to set things off for IUP. Back to receive is McNeil for IUP along with Brown. McNeil receives it at the three yard line, running up the middle, finds a few blocks, a little bit more, coming out to the 35 yard line. Yeah, a very nice return by number 83, Dolan McNeil. There's, There's a flag on the field. Flag and whistle. I'm going to see what's going down. And block in the bl block in the back on IUP. That's John McDonald Horner, number three. So that'll set him back about about right 25 about, yards. Right about the nine yard line, nine ten yard line. And Lenny will come out for the first time today. First and 10, Samir in there right next to Lenny. That's Allen Wright in motion. Get it to Samir. Samir right up the middle. It's about five yards on the play. Yeah, good five yard game by Samir Bullock. Allen Wright going in motion, making the defense move. Samir taking it right up the gut for a decent play. I think that's second and five for the Crimson Hawks. Lenny in the shotgun, gives it to Samir once again. It's almost oh, close down line. By his face mask. Was there no flag on that play? Horse collar or face mask? No call on that. I don't know how I feel about that play, but. Well, anyway, it's third down for IUP. Lenny, once again, back to pass, throws it to Hughes. Incomplete, bringing up fourth down, and Hughes is down. Able to walk it off. But that'll bring out the punt team for IUP.
You know, IUP starting things off not too good. Started off with a flag on the first play. Kick return. Ruiz for the punt. Straight up and down, doesn't get past the 50, bounces out of bounds. Well, that's one Coach Tortorella will not be happy about. Ruiz has had a great start to his season, having a couple boomers, but that one just not what the Crimson Hawks were looking for. Yeah, it's, didn't maybe, make the 50 yard line. Maybe a net of 30, 40 yards on the play. Had good spin to it, but it's not the distance. And so the defense will give it a try. And there's Trouts, Mike, as you talked about. And they have quads for Trouts on his right. Right receiver screen. Max Just Redfield in on the stop. Damon Williams on the reception, making a second down. Yeah, but that's, that's one thing I like about that Max Redfield kid, the transfer. He's like a heat-seeking missile. He can read any play you need him to, and he gets he he always gets himself in the middle of everything. Yeah, Max Redfield, out of, transfer out of Notre Dame. He's been a big ax asset so far this season for the defense. Second down for the Wolves. Trouch, Trouts sending him in motion. Back to pass for Trouts. Delivers it to number two. Max Redfield pushes him down. It's Lewis Curse on the intended receiver. Third down for the Wolves. Same thing with the Wolves. They haven't really gotten anything to get started with. It's number 22, Devin Miller behind Trouts in the backfield. Trouts communicating. Trouts back to pass. Looking over the middle to Curse. And that's a first down for the Wolves. Great catch by Curse, right in the hands, right over the top of the linebackers. Yeah, Curse, the senior from Auburn, Georgia, on the reception there. And Trout's great read, great window. Trying to go no huddle here for Trout's. First and ten. Trout's giving it to Miller. Miller up to the outside. Get some good yardage on that. A four yard pickup on that. <laughs> Number 92, big Jordan Averett was in there to make the stop on the play. Second and six for the Wolves. Trout's here going huddle. I think it's the first time we've seen it all game, you think? Trips for Trouts. Miller right behind him. Trouts back to pass. Looking for Curse. Scrambling to the outside. Sealing Curse to go deep. But he's pushed out of bounds. By that man, Max Redfield. <laughs> Max Redfield. Keen up on the quarterback. Making it third down again for the Wolves. Third and eight. Yeah, so far in the season, Max Redfield is leading the Crimson Hawks in tackles with 20. 20 tackles only in two games. That's pretty good. 10 tackles a game. Trouts with four seconds on the game clock. Two. Gets it off. Whips it out to 17. That's Destin Brown. 
Bringing up fourth down for the Wolves. Looking to go for it on this. Yeah, he might as well. You're one and one on the season. So why not just go for it? <laughs> I mean, if you punt it, you risk a real yeah, chance exactly. of only giving them 10 yards. A little bit too far for a field goal, maybe. And fourth down for the Wolves. Trouts has trips with Miller right behind him. It's Nigel Wiley in the slot. Back to pass. Trouts delivers it over the middle to Curse. Curse is wide open. Making great separation between number 50, Damon Lloyd. Yeah, he just beat Damon Lloyd and Eric Doe on the play right there. Good little, good read by Trouts on the play. Yeah, fantastic play, not to, to be honest. Curse will take a breather. Right over the middle. First and goal for the Wolves. Trouts with a little bit of slant pass right into the face mask of number six, Anthony Davis. Wow. Yeah, I bet Davis is wishing he had <laughs> that one back. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, his head completely turned, but hit him right in the head. You know, if he catches that, that might have been a touchdown. <laughs> I think there that might have no, been a pick six. There was no one on that side of the field for the Wolves. <laughs> Anthony Davis kind of la la land out there. Second and goal. Trouts now. Gives it to Miller. Miller has nowhere to go. It's a loss on the play. Nicky Mandola in there on the tackle, bringing down the running back in the backfield. The number 94, Jordan Divin is checking in. Justin Weldon is checking out. Switching up some personnel. Curse is back in the game. Coming out is number 83, the Wolves tied end. That's Terrell Branch. Third and goal for Trouts. Trouts back to pass, looking for the slant once again. That's Nigel Wiley. Anthony Davis on the cover there. Good job bringing up third down. The ball was a little bit of outside of the receiver's area. Couldn't quite get up there to bring it. And now they're going to bring on the field goal unit after converting on a beautiful fourth down play. We had two for two on the season for the Wolves. 9.37 left to go in this first quarter. Back to kick. Number 81, Alexander Rumel. He's a freshman. 5'10", 150. And the kick is good, and the Wolves will draw first blood. 3-0 up on IUP. This is a pretty, this is a pretty good uh, drive for the Wolves. I mean, thought they were done at fourth down, but... Right over the middle, right over Damon Lloyd's head. That was a ball from Trouts to Curse, converting into first and goal, but couldn't convert on the touchdown. And then we saw a ball right in the face mask of Anthony Davis. Could have been a pick six for the Hawks. And well, this is an interesting kick return formation right here. Are they deeper than expected, Mike? Oh, no, there's, no, two, there's, there's yeah. two guys deep, three guys middle. Maybe they don't trust the kicker's leg to... Hmm. And Rummel with the kick to McNeil. The five-yard line. Taking it up the middle, trying to find some blockers. Shakes off a tackle, and there's a flag on the play. Another flag on the kickoff. 
Last time is a block in the back for IUP. Turn down the ref on the field for the call. And that was another illegal block in the back by the Crimson Hawks, pushing them back much farther. Two flags on two kickoff returns. Special teams isn't really connecting on this one. 9.26 in the first quarter. First and 10 for Lenny. Lenny giving another try. Pretty much the same yard line where they started last drive. Lenny Williams with twins. Lenny gives fakes, gives it to Samir. Samir Bullock, the ball carrier. Minimal game for Samir on the play. Try to take it up the gun, but number seven, that was uh, Johnson Davis. Shown blitz the whole time, got Samir down. Lenny now with trips, second down. Second and eight. Lenny back to pass, looking for McNeil. McNeil with the wide receiver screen. A quick feet going up to the sideline. And he's not going out of bounds without a fight. That's McNeil moving the chains. Good blocks by the wide receivers, making a wide receiver screen perfect for McNeil. First and 10 for Lenny. Lenny fakes it to Samir, gives it to Jojo Gauz, but Jojo Gauz is wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Not much for Jojo Gauz on the play. That was uh, Stinson on the coverage there, bringing Jojo down for a loss, I believe. Yeah, good tackle, getting the big man down, wrapping up the legs. Second and 10, Rex Pierce in the backfield. Lenny gives, fakes it to Brown, gives it to JoJo over the middle, gets a pass, and he keeps turning those legs nearly into enemy territory. And they're gonna use a hurry up offense, that was, but that was a very nice play, getting about 15. 15 over the middle, gives it to Brown. And there's that man, the second B in our double B backfield, Dewan <laughs> Brown. Do you mind explaining what the double B is for the listeners? Oh, here, Mike. That's the bread and butter of the team. Bread and butter. Brown, <laughs> Bullock, B and B, bread and butter. Those are our guys. <laughs> Give it to Brown once again. Going up middle. Tough running. Good job by Dwayne Brown, making it about third and two on the play. Samir Bullock is checking back in. Third down for the Hawks. We talk about double B. We're not talking about a bed and breakfast. Bread and butter. We're not talking about any Airbnb. Bread and butter for Brown and Bullock. Third down for the Crimson Hawks. In motion is McNeil. Gives it to Samir. Samir up the middle, finds a few more yards. First down for the Hawks. And that's the man. That's the Samir Bullock that we all know and love. Getting the tough yards with his great vision. And that's one thing that you can really say about this kid is the vision. He sees the entire field. For being such for being a smaller type running back, he is the eyes of a hawk. Eyes of the hawk, Mike. Maybe a crimson. McNeil hawk. to the outside. Takes a pitch straight from Lenny. He's dropped back about six yards behind the line of scrimmage. Devin Jones getting the great pressure to bring Don McNeil down, making it second down and 14, 15 for the Crimson Hawks. Second and long, Mike. Vision of a hawk. How about that? A Crimson Hawk. Crimson Hawk, it's the best vision you could get. Second and long for Lenny Williams. Lenny with trips. Samir at the sidecar. Back to pass for Lenny. Looking over the middle, no one's there. Shawnique Brown was the intended receiver. I really don't know what Lenny saw in that one. Shawnique Brown was covered up the entire game, was uh, the entire play. You see that no one was there. Double coverage by the linebacker and safety. Third and long. He was covered like he was wearing a Cheney robe there. A Cheney robe, Mike. 
Third and long for Lenny, back to pass, looking for a target. Looks, at, looks like it's Samir Bullock. Samir to the outside, huge block by JoJo. Keeps moving the legs. Good play, but not quite enough. It'll be about fourth and five. But like I said, good vision by Samir Bullock. Made two men miss, eventually getting stuffed. But they're gonna go for it on fourth down. Fourth and five for Lenny. Shawnee Brown wide open. Well, oh, no, there's a guy over there now. Twins for Lenny. Back to pass. Delivers it to JoJo, almost intercepted. Tipped and almost intercepted for Lenny. And the offense will come off the field. In comes the defense. You know, Samir had great vision, Mike, with the big block by JoJo. JoJo Goss just blew up that play. And now it's Trout's back on the field. <coughs> First down and 10 for the Wolves. First and 10. Trout gives it to Miller. Miller to the outside. There's a flag on the play. Uh, hit. Possibly late hit out of bounds, late hit maybe? Or something? Uh, on Amendola. Oh, holding offense. All right. Yeah, Nick Amendola, the sophomore from Norwin High School in North Huntington, Pennsylvania. Norwin High School, not too far from here. It's next school district, school district over from mine. What high school you go to, Mike? I went to uh, East Allegheny. East Allegheny. Good old Wildcats. <laughs> First and long for Trout, a double sidecar. From a 21 and 22, Rolando Ransom. Along with Miller. Back to pass for Trout. Trout scrambling. Almost picked. Picked up for a pick six. Almost. The second should have been pick six. The first one was dropped by Anthony Davis, and that one was J.R. Stevens. And that's one thing this Crimson Hawks defense really prides himself in, is takeaway and getting points from those takeaways. Trout was scrambling to the outside. Thought, thought he saw a target, but... Almost in the hands of J.R. Stevens. Second and long for Trouts. Twins on both sides. Motion. Back to pass. Trouts delivers. And there's a receiver wrapped up in the talons of the Crimson Hawks. The talons of Max Redfield. And there's a flag. A little bit of a scrap after the play, maybe. Ooh, these refs are loving the late flags. It's Max Redfield. Getting a little too carried away, maybe. Bring up first down. Flag so far killing IUP, just destroying their offense and defense. Trouts now with Miller right behind him, gives it to Miller. Miller to the outside, finds a few blocks, but is wrapped up by 36. Nick Amendola on the play again, saying absolutely not, not in my <laughs> nest. <laughs> nest as in referring to Crimson Hawks, Mike? Absolutely. Second and 10. No gain on the play. Yeah. 
Trouts with twins and a slot. Back to pass for Trouts. Trouts looking deep for Curse once again. People having trouble covering Kurtz. Right through the hands, though, of Curse. Curse, if he would have caught that, that would have been a beautiful touchdown right over Max Redfield. Third and long now for the Wolves. Yeah, Curse had great separation. Wide open. Couldn't bring it in. Trouts once again. Twins in a slot. Nigel Wiley motioning in the trips. Trouts back to pass. Intercepted by Max Redfield. Redfield trying to get good, good field position for the IUP's and, offense. And that's Max Redfield making up for the 15-yard penalty for the unnecessary roughness. Congratulations, Max Redfield, your first interception as a member of the Crimson Hawks. Mike, third time's a charm. First one didn't get it, second one didn't get it, but the third time, Max Redfield, interception for the Crimson Hawks. First and 10 now for Lenny Williams. 3.54 left to go in the first quarter. I thought Max was gone on that one. He tried to high step a little too early. <laughs> Lenny gives it to Samir. Samir with the spin move. Samir going to the outside, find a few more blocks or blockers. That's Allen Wright with the block, and Samir goes all the way across the field into the end zone. Crimson Hawks touchdown. What a play by Samir Bullock, his first rushing touchdown on the season. The man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Samir Bullock. Just be his hype man, Mike. Just be his hype man. Come on. I could. I could do it. Not going to lie. <laughs> And now coming onto the field for the first time today, Dylan Sarka. Dylan Sarka for the extra point. Mike Petropola for the hold. And that'll go through the uprights, making the kick is good. 7-3, IUP on top. Wow. I thought Smear was wrapped up in that big pile, but he went all all the way across the field, Mike. All the, from sideline to sideline. Quick spin and walked right in the end zone. Huge blocks by Allen Wright. Led to a seven points for the Hawks. And that's just the offense that we know. That's the offense we know and love for the IUP from the Hawks. I mean, make big plays. Big plays on offense and defense. All started with Max Redfield interception. And that's to be expected from this Crimson Hawks team. Yeah, Max, I mean, third time's a charm for him. He dropped two almost interceptions, threw it on the right into the bread basket for Max. Coach Tortorella, I mean, he's got to be got to be happy with the start now for IUP. Absolutely. You know, you get the jitters out. You get your first score on the game. First score on the game. And, and yeah. Getting the points. train rolling, I guess. Getting the train rolling. But the flags, the flags are going to kill both teams, the Wolves and the Hawks. And now Sean Bowling with the kick. It's number 17, Destin Brown for the receiving end. And he's wrapped up and dropped down at 20. Looks like Zach Kelly on the stop there on special teams. First and 10 for the Cheney Wolves. 3.37 left to go in this first quarter. Defense coming out once again. Trouts with double sidecar. Trouts will give it to Miller. Duffed on the play by number 91, DeAndre Easterling, on the stop. Yeah, DeAndre just a monster on that D line. Yeah, this defensive line is having a great season. Easterling 
Everett Divin. For the D-line, second down for Trout's double sidecar once again, and it's Ransom along with Miller. Twins on Trout's left side. Back to pass for Trout's, looking for a quick curl. And that was number 14, Rokeen Allier. Lost his footing. Third down. Jamal Everett will come into the game. Two thirty to go in this first quarter. Trout's trying to convert. Back to pass for Trout's. Trout's looking deep in the sideline. No one is there. Just a bit outside. Just, I don't know what Trout's was looking for. Maybe there was a incorrect route run, but they're going to bring on these special teams. Maybe everyone was just completely covered and took a ball out of bounds. Back to receive Mike Petropola for the punt. And punting for the Wolves. That's Brendan Van Denmark, senior, 6'2", 185. Fourth down. The Wolves not going for it this time. And Denmark with the punt. Petropola, no fair catch. He'll receive it. Some good blocks by J.R. Stevens. Petropola with the quick feet. Runs into McNeil. Great return by Mike Petropola, taking it into Crimson Hawks territory, or I'm sorry, Wolves territory, where they can potentially get another score. Quick score here. Quick score, two minute drill, maybe for the first quarter. I mean, still first quarter. You know, Mike, I mean, IUP 7 3 on top. Let's take a look at that touchdown by Samir Bullock. Yeah, folks, we have brand new technology here for you. Brand new Telestrator. You have the offensive line right here. Samir Bullock's back here. He's going to find a nice hole in between the redshirt sophomore, Colin McAllister, and Jeff Arnold. Going to come straight up here, do a little spinnerooski, and take it right into the end zone for the touchdown. Let's look at that play one more time. Samir to the outside, into the end zone. Big block by Allen Wright, but <laughs> you just missed it, folks. But Dom McNeil, huge, huge reception on the play, scoring another <laughs> touchdown for IUP while we're showing you that replay. Yeah, I was too busy working on Telstra, didn't get a chance to see that play. Dom McNeil from Lenny Williams for a long touchdown pass. Making it now 13-3 against Cheney. Dylan Sarko once again for the extra point. Flag on the play. Flag on the play. Refs will talk about it. Coach Tortorella on sideline yelling at the refs. Looks like it's on the Crimson Hawks. A 45 yard. Oh. Illegal equipment on the Crimson Hawks. Um, yeah, I haven't wow. heard that one before, but that was officially a 45 yard touchdown pass for Don McNeil. And that's the extra point for Dylan Sarka, but let's take a look at the touchdown we just missed because we're showing you a replay of a recent touchdown. Lenny Williams in the eye, faking the handoff to Samir Bullock, scrambling around, finding number 83, Dawn McNeil, right around the 15-yard line, taking it in, diving, and that is the Crimson Hawks touchdown that we missed. 
mean, you know, Denny, I'll tell you what, th it figures. The first time we get to use the tri the Telestrator, <laughs> and I'm doing such a great job, and we missed. You're doing a, a great job, Mike. You're doing a great you know, job. I think I did okay for my first time. You know, practice makes perfect. We'll see in the future. <laughs> you know, Mike, you're doing such a great job. You should be really paid more for this job. You know, I agree with you. I agree with you. 14-3, <laughs> IUP on top. 146 left to go in this first quarter. Touchdown by Don McNeil. Congrats to McNeil. And I think the IUP offense is starting to roll on these Cheney Wolves. Sean bowling for the kickoff. And back to receive number 25, Damon Williams. Tackled at the 15, just and completely stuffed. And that was Don McNeil's second, or I'm sorry, third receiving touchdown on the season. Third receiving touchdown? Only two games, I mean, doing pretty good, McNeil. First and 10 for the Wolves. Defense back on the field. I feel like the defense has been on the field the whole game, Mike. <laughs> two quick touchdowns, that's what happens. <laughs> Defense isn't, defense isn't the time to breathe. Defense wins championships, wins games. I mean, so far doing pretty well. Trout's now first and 10. Miller's sidecar, Trout's back to pass. Scrambling, looking deep. Couldn't find anyone. Throws out of bounds. Just a bit outside. 1.30 left to go in the game. I'm sorry, in this first quarter. Oh, that was a quick game, I'll tell you what. <laughs> a quick game. Four quarters down already, Mike. And if you have a chance, of course, Boy Second and ten for Trouts. Trouts now back to pass. Fumbles a snap, throwing deep. But on the coverage was Anthony Davis. A little bit too deep for number 29. Sarah Bryant. Flag on play. Is that the fourth penalty on the game? Roughing the passer. Please. Maybe a late hit. Uh, mm. I'll tell you, Vince, that's, that's the fourth or fifth penalty on the Crimson Hawks so far. Yeah, not looking too good. I mean, flag, flag's just killing them right now. It just gives them, gives Cheney a new set of downs right down the field. Now they're at the 30-yard line, 31-yard line. And Trouts came out of the game number one and war nazer mathias mathis in the game mathis now with miller behind him maths give it to miller high snap diamond jones in on the stop and trout is coming back in the game math is out now and trout's back in I guess he was hit pretty hard if he came out of the game. Minute left in this first quarter. Trouts with the tight end. Gives it to, well, Trouts will take it himself to the outside. Gets no yardage on the plate. It was great open field to run for Trouts, but just completely runs to the out of bounds. And this just in, I'm watching on the sidelines. Looks like Dwayne Brown is out of the game. His pads are off. Looks like he's going into the field house. He's on crutches right now. They just pulled the card up for him to take him into the field house. Give him the field house locker room, it looks I like. Didn't even know he was injured. Didn't see him go down weird or anything. Not at all. Maybe they're just saving him for the next game, you know? Third down. Trouts, Curse muffles it, couldn't come down with it. I guess I was saying, I mean, I'm just staying safe with Brown just in case, you know, I mean. 
Well, it doesn't look good if he's coming out of the game, but they're going to be safe with him. They would just let him sit on the sidelines. But being talked to now by Chris Temple and injured receiver Walt Pegese. Yeah, that doesn't look good if Chris Temple's talking to him like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, Lenny game. Williams is checking on him now. Oh, blocked punts by McNeil. McNeil will cover it, and it will be in for another touchdown. Don McNeil's second touchdown wow. of the game. A receiving touchdown and a beautiful blocked punt by the Crimson Hawks. And, you know, that's the special teams that we know and love from this Crimson Hawks team. Congratulations, Don McNeil, on your fourth touchdown of the game season. <laughs> Anthony Davis is in the hands of Anthony Davis and bats it into the hands of Don McNeil. Exactly. <laughs> Davis could have been like, it's mine, it's mine. <laughs> but McNeil with the second touchdown, congratulations. Making now 20 to three, special teams dominating this punt game. Dylan Sarkin now for the extra point. Trying to make it 21. So making it 20, 20 to three. 16 seconds to go in this first quarter. IUP on top, 20 to 3. Let's look at this special teams blocked punt against the Wolves. Recovered by McNeil. And you have, you're going to have three guys coming right off the edge into the punter's face, blocking the ball. Don McNeil right there into the hands. <laughs> Davis is probably thinking, this should have been my touchdown. <laughs> I think they're just happy to get a touchdown on the play. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure Davis is thinking, I mean, you already got a touchdown, man. How about you let me have one? Come on. <laughs> you see McNeil and, and Davis both talking back and forth. Oh, that's exactly what Davis is saying to him. He's like, this well. should have been mine, man. 16 seconds to go. Sean Bowling with a kickoff. Regardless, great play by the punt return team. Getting through the line, blocking the punt. They've been getting close all season. Finally, McNeil has a connection. So is that four touchdowns? That is his fourth touchdown on the season so far. Three rushing, or th I'm sorry, three receiving and a blocked kick. And Sean Bowling with a kick, muffled, receiving end. And and 12 seconds left to go in this first quarter. IUP on top, 20 to three. And Trouts will come out for first and 10. And we have Trouts coming out, first and ten, but we're going to throw it down to Emma McCarthy at the end of the first quarter, our sideline reporter. What's up, IUP fans? I made sure to come out today to get my cool IUP t-shirt. Thank you to Big League Haircuts here in Indiana. Make sure to come out and get your swag all in. <laughs> and thank you, Emma. Twelve seconds left to go in this first quarter. There's a five-yard penalty on the Wolves. First and 15. Trouts sending motion. Back to pass, looking over the middle. Finds number 29, Bryant. And that's the end of the first quarter. And we're gonna send it to a quick break.
Think of the NCAA as a marching band. We wouldn't stop with halftime. We'd be full-time. Celebrating student athletes in everything they do. Okay, so don't think of us as a marching band. Think of us as a spirit squad. Well, just know we're always there for student athletes. Receiving a Jefferson Award for public service was an honor I will always cherish. I've known since I was very young that I wanted to help make a difference, but I didn't create an organization to win an award. I did it because as a teacher, I believe all kids deserve a good start and a shot at high achievement. I'm April King, a graduate of Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Get my story at iup.edu. Yeah, you got to get the qualm back here then. I mean, if, if, if you have to run. And run. here we are back in the second quarter. 23, IUP on top. The Wolves with the ball, second and 10. Second and 10, Shrouds with trips. Miller directly behind him. Trouts with the play action, giving it to Curse. Curse comes down with it. And there's a big hit by Curse on J.R. Stevens. So far on the game, Samir Bullock, five rushes, 55 yards, touchdown. Lenny Williams is six for nine, 81 yards, and a touchdown. Don McNeil, three receptions, 58 yards, touchdown on the other side. Dominic Trouts, six for 17, one interception, 52 yards. Devin Miller, five rushes, seven yards. And yeah, that's your update. And first and 10 now. A huge play by Curse. Zero backfield, and that's a running back screen for, for number 25, Damon Williams. There's a flag on the play. Another flag on the field. I don't know, Mike. You, I mean, you can't throw a flag on that. How is he going to go out of bounds if you don't push him out of bounds? I don't know. I think that flag was unneeded on that. The crowd isn't too happy with that one. Oh, I wouldn't be happy at all. I know Tortorella's out there trying to give someone an earful again. IUP's fifth penalty for 156 yards. Jeez. That's sickening. And now first and 10. For Trouts. Trouts now with trips, and there's an offsides penalty on, on the offense. First and 15 for the Wolves. Stacked trips for the Wolves. We'll be looking for a screen here for Trouts. And that's a delay of game on the Wolves. Tell you what, Vince, this has been. Time, Time out. out. We're good, never mind. We'll say this has been a very high penalized game. The Crimson Hawks, six penalties, 171 yards. The Wolves, three penalties, 16 yards. And we'll be right back here with Cheney versus IUP on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. Students in communications media at Indiana University of Pennsylvania can focus on a variety of areas, including media promotions. Our promotion students learn their skills by working in a hands-on environment gaining real-world experience. 
They learn how to use media to promote, produce, and manage events and how media organizations operate. They create promotional campaigns and help clients pitch their services, products, and events. With excellent classes led by experienced teachers, the Communications Media Department at IUP is perfect for students interested in media promotion. And we're back here at George P. Miller Stadium with the Wolves on offense right about the 39-yard line of the IUP Crimson Hawks. Trouts in the pistol. Williams directly behind Trouts. Trouts giving it to Williams. Williams smuffles the handoff. Like big stiff arm by Williams. Number 90. Is that 92 or 95? 92, I believe it was. Jamal Averett. And 21 got a huge stiff arm. Eric Doe. Huge stiff arm by Williams. Second and four for the Wolves. And Crimson Hawk territory. Krauts now back to pass. Looking deep in the corner. Wow. And that's a touchdown for the Wolves. Brandon Joyner on the touchdown, but there is a flag on the field. I don't know it's who. The can... spot of the touchdown looks like. Maybe some pass interference. Oh, wow. Nice pass from Trouts. It was Brandon Joyner on the touchdown. But right over the shoulder of the defensive back. Good play by Trouts and Joyner. Now kicking is Alexander Remmel, the freshman. Alexander's kick is good, making it 10-20. 10 points up on the board for the Wolves. It looked like good coverage for the Crimson Hawks, and still, Joyner still came down with it. A 76-yard drive by Trouts and his offense. But look, here comes the Crimson Hawks. <laughs> Lenny Williams now going to come on the field after this kickoff. Lenny Williams and his offense that haven't seen much playing time today. <laughs> Quick scores by the Hawks, by the Crimson Hawks. Number 24, Justice Evans, and number 83, Dahl McNeil, back to receive this kick from Rumble. Yeah, the Crimson Hawks got the ball at the end of the game. After halftime, they'll be on defense. McNeil along, oh, McNeil back to receive at the 10 yard line. They'll field it. And he finds a few blocks, bringing it almost to the 45 yard line. Man, I thought Don McNeil was trying to go for the trifecta there. <laughs> Receiving, blocked, touch, blocked, punt, touchdown, and a kick return touchdown. <laughs> And first and ten. First and ten for Lenny Williams and his offense. And Samir at the sidecar. Lenny gives it to Samir. Samir going to the outside. Trying to find somewhere to go three or four yards on the ground for Samir Bullock there. Second down, no huddle. Lenny quick to Allen Wright. Allen Wright with a wide receiver screen, trying to do the quick feats. There's and the face, face mask, mask on play. I think that's one finally in favor for the Crimson Hawks offense.
Throwing it down the ref for the call. Jamil Hines on the face mask there on Allen Wright, adding 15 yards to the IUP offense, making it first down. Yeah, Jamil Hines getting an earful from his teammates on defense. Now you can't fight with your teammates, doesn't lead to success for the game. Lenny will give it to Malik. Malik, Malik Anderson. Anderson. Malik Anderson is back from an injury being taken out of the game last week. Lay, a, a right leg injury. Glad to see him back in the game with the absence of Dwayne Brown. Yeah, Dwayne Brown, still no information on him. Second and nine for the Crimson Ox. Lenny gives it to Malik Anderson once again. Malik gets about four yards on the play. Just a little bit shy of the first down. I see that's about third and two. Personnel change for the Wolves. Third down now for Lenny and his Crimson Hawks. Lenny with twins to his right. Lenny now, play action, pitch to Malik Anderson. Malik Anderson trying to get to the outside. I don't think he got it. It might be a yard shy of the first down. Yeah, it might be a yard shy. Samir Bullock now coming back from the game. Fourth and two. Fourth and two now, Lenny going underneath center maybe? Nope, still in shotgun. Oh, and false start Free play. defense. Going deep for JoJo Gauze. Into the hands, but couldn't bring it down. He made the entire defensive line jump. Yeah, the entire <laughs> defensive line jumped on that one. And Sini offense jump. Number 99, like we said, the entire defensive line jump. Nice hard count by Lenny Williams. First and 10 for the Crimson Hawks. Like you said, Mike, free play. And Lenny just threw it up for JoJo. First and ten, gives it to Samir. Samir to the outside. Samir Bullock, the ball carrier. And Samir Bullock now coming off the field. He's been having a day today. Justice Evans checking in. Yeah, Justice Evans getting a little bit of a personnel change, and but you, Samir Bullock. And you have Samir's stats so far in the day. Six attempts, 57 yards, averaging 9.5 yards per carry, and a touchdown for the sophomore, Samir Bullock. Justice Evans on the run. Moving the chains, got the first down. Congratulations to Samir, just having a great day. As usual. <laughs> A comfy, breezy, warm Saturday afternoon. And the refs will blow the whistle. Nine fifty-two in this first half. Waiting to hear from the ref on what the call is, maybe a time. A time problem, possibly. Lenny will give it to Justice Evans. Justice Evans almost to the end zone. Getting it down to the two-yard line. Justice Evans, number 24. Evans trying to get in that end zone. Gives it to Evans once again, and he'll just walk right in to the Crimson Hawks. Touchdown. Touchdown. 
for the Central Catholic alum, Justice Evans. I believe, yes, his first touchdown on the season, his first touchdown of his career, the five foot seven, 170 pound speedster running back from Pittsburgh. IUP 26-10. And congratulations to Justice. First career touchdown here for IUP. And Sarka for the extra point. And that's good to go. 27-10. IUP on top of Cheney. Right off the golden toe, Dylan Sarka. And we'll be right back with IUP versus Cheney on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. I chose Division II because athletes graduate at a higher rate. I can stay closer to home and be an important part of the community. I chose Division II because I can double major. And take part in campus activities. I chose Division II because classrooms are smaller. Students have more time with their instructors. And I can compete for a national championship. I chose Division II for all these reasons and more. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose, I chose, I chose Division II. Division II. Welcome, and if you're just joining us, we have a multiple amount of touchdowns. Don McNeil, Samir Bullock, two touchdowns by Don McNeil, and now Justice Evans, his first career touchdown ever here at IUP, and he's made he made it 27-10 on top of the Wolves. Sean Bowling now for the kickoff. Congratulations to Evans. 9.28 to go in this first half. Zaire Bryant through with Zaire Bryant in the backfield. Return the kick. Sorry, that is Williams, not Bryant. Tim Williams nowhere to go. And Trouts and his offense will come on out. And looks like Cheney versus IUP. Cheney coming out on top on passing. 107 yards, but rushing, it's all IUP. 99 rushing yards to 15. Both teams at eight first downs. IUP wow. getting swamped in penalties. Six penalties for 171 yards compared to Cheney's only three penalties for 16 yards. Hmm. The refs are just nitpicking at this IUP Crimson Hawks. First and 10 for Trouts. Trouts gives it to Williams. Williams wrapped up by the Towns of the Crimson Hawks. Amendola in there on the stop. Second down for the Wolves. Damon Williams directly behind Trouts. Twins with a tight end. Eight seconds to go in the game clock. Gives it to Williams once again. Nowhere to go. Amendola and Matt Moad in there on the stop. First time we've called Matt Moad's name today. Glad to see him getting on the field making some plays. Matt Moad made it third down for the Wolves. Trouts once again with twins and a tight end. Third down. Back to pass, Trouts trying to throw a quick one in them, 29. Incomplete, bringing up fourth down for the Cheney Wolves. Tenor receiver was Zaire Bryant, and the punt team will come out for the Wolves. Fourth down. Mike Petropola in the back to try and return this one. Less than eight in this first half. IUP on top, 27-10. Mike Petropola, the junior education major from Wellsboro, Pennsylvania. Petropola education major, huh? Did not know that. Neither did I. Nice to... Let's do this. Rolled snap to the punter. 
No fair catch by Pachapola. And he'll go up the sideline. Right about the, the 35 yard line. What a, another, another good return by Mike Petropola. Had a really good one earlier on the day. This just adding to the IUP's steamroller. Steamroller for the Crimson Hawks, 27 to 10. Lenny Williams will come out on the field. First and 10. Malik Anderson and Shawnique Brown out on the field, as well as Devin Atlund. Yeah, I mean, IUP Crimson Hawks, they have a deep backfield depth chart. They have Malik Anderson, Brown, Samir Bullock, Justice Evans got in on the action today. Back to pass for Lenny to Brown. Yeah, Shawnee Brown just wasn't expecting that play. A little too early, a little too early thrown by Lenny Williams. Second and ten. Len so does this mean that Lenny ties? The most all-time passing touchdowns? Yes, yes, Lane did tie that with the uh, touchdown pass to McNeil. Don McNeil. Gives it to Anderson. Anderson right up the middle. Stuffed by number three. Third and six. Looks like number 63, Joe Peterson, is limping off the field. 63 can't walk off the field. Well, Ken Roman like will come in for him. He looks like that. Get some help walking off. Good to see he's able to get off the field and the IUP crowd getting into it. On this Saturday afternoon game. Yeah, Joe Peterson, 6'4, 290. He's a big boy. Lenny now with trips to his left. Third down, seven minutes in this second quarter. Gives it to Malik Anderson. Malik Anderson right up the middle. He does his quick juke move, and he'll get the first down a little bit more. A little bit more sprinkles on that cake. <laughs> and there's the ground game from the Crimson Hawks that we all know and love. Good job by Malik Anderson coming back. Quick wet receiver screen to McNeil. McNeil with a quick outside, and he could be in for the touchdown. He's out of bounds at the three-yard line. Good quick play. dive into the end zone looked like it. Good play, man. Don McNeil, he has been in the game. He's been in every game, like we said, the third touchdown he's had. And Lenny now, once again, gives it to Malik Anderson. Malik Anderson trying to get in. Just short of the touchdown. But yeah, Don McNeil, 5'8", 170 pounds, the redshirt sophomore from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, has made a huge impact on the Crimson Hawks offense this season. Give it to Anderson. Could be in. Touchdown for Malik Anderson. First of his career, I'm pretty sure. And Sarka now for the extra point. Making it 33 to 10. Sarka puts to the uprights, making it 34. No, Vinny, that will not be the first touchdown of Anderson's career. He had two last year. Number three. Number three for Number him, three on the career. And Sarka for the extra point. Through the uprights, 34-10, IUP on top. You know, Mike, I gotta talk about the uh, the personnel right now. I mean, we don't even have Walt Pagese in the game. We haven't have uh, Alan Wright right now, really connecting with Lenny. I mean, but McNeil. I mean, we have a whole bunch of athletes on this offense. A lot of young athletes: McNeil, Samir, Wayne Anderson. Just multiple amounts. I mean, we got Lee Brown, Anderson, Justice Evans. Jeez, just a monstrous, just monster athletes on this IUP team. And <laughs> McNeil's back on the field for the kickoff team. Looks like he's on every single team out here except the defense. Man, this young man can do a little bit of everything. 
Congrats to McNeil having a great game today. That's Sean Bowling lining up for the kickoff. Clouds are now rolling into Indiana, Pennsylvania. George P. Miller Stadium, IUP versus Cheney. 34 to 10. Crimson Hawks. Sean Bowling for the kickoff. Sean with the kick. Delivering it to Rakeen Olier. He'll take it from the five yard line. It's like Anthony Davis on the stop there for the IP special teams play. And the Wolves will take it around the 30 yard line. First and 10 for Trout and his offense. 618 left to go in the second quarter. Trust me to have something happen before the end of this first half. Yeah, you really don't want to go into the second half down 24 points to a Crimson Hawks team like this. Double twins. Gives it to Williams. Diamond Jones in there on the stop, dragging down the ball carrier, number 25, Williams. Good penetration by Diamond Jones. Second down. Once again, double twins trying to spread out the defense. And we have Trouts along with Williams directly behind him. Trout's back to pass, wide receiver screen. Couldn't come up with it. Whistle on the play. Could almost be a fumble on that. Third down yeah. for the Wolves. Almost a fumble. I heard like some of the coaches yelling on the sidelines, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. But it didn't break the plane, looked like, so incomplete pass. Third and nine for Trouts. That's Kearson motion. Trouts with trips to his left. Trouts back to pass over the middle. Almost a first down. That's Bryant. And it's first down for Trouts. He got it. Nice read by Trouts, knowing he had pressure coming from the left side, getting it out quick to his wide receiver. Twins for Trouts. Trouts gives it to Williams. Williams wrapped up the backfield by DeAndre Easterly. There's that man again. Love calling his name. Called about two or three times a game. DeAndre Easterly always gets a huge play for the IUP Crimson Hawks. Second and long for Trouts. Trouts once again with double twins. Kearson motion making it trips with a play action. Throws it out to number 84 wide open. 84 Brandon Joyner. He had a huge touchdown earlier today. Trouts I guess looking for Joyner a lot today. Could be his uh Intended target. Yeah, Joyner's had a heck of a game having getting a touchdown earlier. Using that length to get up and over the defender. First and ten for the Wolves. Trouts gives it to Williams, but he's wrapped up. Stuffed by big 94 Jordan Divin on the play. Wow. It's a firm Crimson Hawk wall. Jordan Devin, 6'1", 270 from Coriopolis, went to West Allegheny. Petropola leading the Crimson Hawks to 34 to 10. Second down, back to pass for Trouts. Throws it deep, deep into the hands of number 11, Nigel Wiley. Wow. He Great comes play. down with it. Nigel Riley just going up there, extending over number 22, J.R. Stevens. 
Trouts was dropping back, and man, there was really nothing open. He just set a little Hail Mary up to his boy, Nigel Wiley, and his prayer was answered. Nice play by the Wolves. Wiley making a statement. He's here to play. He's a legitimate receiver out here. Eight on the game clock for Trouts. Muffled snap, looking for the option, but he just slides down. Number 44, Brendan Myers almost taking down Trouts, but Trouts gave himself up, slid first. It could be scared of the defense, Mike. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't want one of those guys taking me down. <laughs> Trout sending Kirsten in motion. Back to pass for Trouts. Looking over the middle. Trouts, Trouts will take it himself. Looking to the wide open. As they, are, as they are Bryant wide open in the end zone. There was no Crimson Hawk around. There were two Wolves wide open in the end zone. Crimson Hawks were going left and the Wolves were going right. And you know, hey, that's how it's done. You know, let's, Mike, let's take a look at that uh, big reception that led to this touchdown for the Wolves. See Trout's, Trout's dropping back, throwing up a gift, a little prayer to number 11. Wow. Good coverage and everything, but great athleticism by great Wiley. Play. Congratulations to Wiley getting that play. That's Rummel now for the extra point. Blocked, Blocked. extra point by J.R. Stevens. He just walked right in there. Special teams for the Crimson Hawks this game have been absolutely dominant. 2.29 left to go in the second quarter. And we will be, we'll be right back here at George P. Miller Stadium on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. I chose Division II because athletes graduate at a higher rate. I can stay closer to home and be an important part of the community. I chose Division II because I can double major. And take part in campus activities. I chose Division II because classrooms are smaller. Students have more time with their instructors. And I can compete for a national championship. I chose Division II for all these reasons and more. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose, I chose Division II. 2.29 left to go in the second quarter. We have Rummel kicking off. Kicking off from a Wolves touchdown for Cheney. McNeil will field it at the five. Big open space for him to run. Shakes a tackle. Don McNeil. McNeil out there doing his thing, what he likes to do. Make what's, plays. Makes plays, that's, that's what he likes to do. You know, from what I've heard, I heard he likes to play video games and makes plays. <laughs> in the, and defense wins, wins games, right? Ch defense wins championships. Ch true, games go to championships, true. I mean, you have to win the game to go to the championship. Exactly. So I understand what you're saying. <laughs> Picking up what you're putting down. Lenny Williams and Justice Evans in the backfield. Allen right out to the left and behind Cole Hughes. Hughes and Allen right. Evan will take, Evans will take the ball. Actually, it's... Wow, great fake. Allen Wright getting some running room. Great blocking. Wow. You, you know, Vinny, I'm not going to lie. Holy. I, do not, I, I have no idea what just happened, Mike. I could I not see not, it from up here. Do not, do not think that was a designed Jeez. play. Lenny Williams scrambled to the left, found Allen Wright on a little pitch, and Allen Wright just shook and baked the entire defense. Lenny Williams tried to pull a magic trick on us. Jeez. It was on number 64, Jeff Arnold blocking at least 20 yards down the field for Allen Wright. Back to pass for Lenny. Lenny going deep to Brown, wide open. Touchdown for Shawnee Brown. Flag on the play. What? There is a flag, go figure. Wide open, no one was there. 
What's the flag for burning the defender too bad? <laughs> I, I, I really don't know. Didn't see anything. Holy. <laughs> and that's an IUP Crimson Hawks touchdown. Congratulations to Brown. 1.43 left to go in the second quarter. Lenny Williams answers back to the Wolves touchdown. Sarko once again out for the extra point. A 34-yard completion to number 11, Shawnique Brown. IUP up 40-16. Just in the first half. And makes it 41 to 16. Wow, Mike. We get, a, we get a magic play. Then we get Brown wide open in the end zone. Just walks right in. Yeah, you get a little shake and bake with Allen. Get a little height <laughs> advantage with Sean Neek Brown. Good to see these Crimson Hawks are coming together as a team. And Lenny Williams. Another touchdown. Breaks the record for fifth all-time the IUP record book, taking Michael Mann. So is he fourth now? Uh, he would be fourth. Wow. Yes. Shawnique Brown, six foot three. It's a big guy out of Mechanicsburg, a business major. Congrats to Brown, along with Lenny reaching fourth in the all-time touchdowns for quarterback. Sean Bowling kicking off. I feel like he's kept, kept the leg warm all game long. He's just kicking off, touching after touching after touchdown. Sean booting it deep. And he'll field it at the three yard line. 17, Destin Brown, not the best of moves. That kickoff would have went out of bounds for a penalty. You know, Mike, I saw that touchdown, and I really didn't know what, didn't see what Brown did. Let's let's take a look. Well, Vinny, we're going to go back to our Telestrator magic here. You have Lenny Williams lined up right back here. Shawnee Brown right down this area. He's going to run down the field, make a defender miss right a little bit off screen, make him fall, touchdown. Let's see the play, guys. There's Lenny making the move. Getting his man, Shawnee Brown, wide open. You couldn't see Shawnee Brown make the defender fall, but man, he shook him out of his shoes. Yeah, it must have broke the ankles of the defender. Not literally. <laughs> Had him on skates, Mike. Had there him on you skates. Go. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> Nick Amendola on the stop that time. Second and one, Trout's back to pass. Over the middle, over the hands of Max Redfield. Almost intercepted. Max, you are not going to get a better play <laughs> than that to get another interception just out, just in his hands. Couldn't quite reel it in. Oh, would have been a great play for Max Redfield. Yeah, Max had the ball in his hands, and wide receiver made a good play of knocking it out of his hands. Third down now for the Wolves. Trips for Trouts. Trouts back to pass. Looking over the middle for a screen. Oh, That's intercepted by the big man, the D-line. Big boy for the touchdown. DeAndre Tillman on the interception return for the touchdown. The second Crimson Hawks defensive touchdown. Wow, what a play by the big man. Day Andre Tillman, and you don't see that every day, Vinny. The big man, <laughs> DeAndre Tillman, 6'4, 260. The sophomore getting his big, greasy paws on it, <laughs> bringing it in, rushing for the touchdown. Crimson Hawks. Tillman said, Whoop, give me that in the end zone. Pick six for Tillman. I mean, pick six. I mean, it is about lunchtime. Might have been hungry. <laughs> Wanted that ball. <laughs> Tillman with the touchdown. My goodness. Sarka with the extra point. 48-16. 101 left to go in the second quarter. Wow. 
My goodness. 18-yard interception return by DeAndre. You know, I, I think DeAndre De Tillman. I, I think Tillman didn't even know he had the ball for a second. <laughs> I didn't know he had the ball for a second. I lost it in the coverage. <laughs> Tillman, congrats, man. The second interception on the day of Trouts. Yeah, it's two interceptions for the defense. Amendola, defensive coordinator, has, has to be happy for that one. 101 left to go. Congrats, Tillman. Defense doing a great job today containing the Cheney Wolves offense. Sean Bullen kicking off. Back to receive is Williams. Had, had Dan and Williams had nowhere to go, but we're gonna throw back to that touchdown by Tillman. Trout's in the pistol, calling his play, dropping back the pass, gonna toss it right over the center right here, but no, Donger Tillman said <laughs> absolutely not. I want that touchdown. It is my turn, <laughs> sir. <laughs> thank you. Tillman saying, please and thank you for the touchdown to Trout's. Trout's now back on the field. Trying to get something, trying to get something rolling for the Wolves. 52 seconds left to go in the second quarter. I don't know if they're down 48 to 16. There's not much you can really get going. <laughs> and wrapped up is Kears. Max Redfield on another stop. Clock is still rolling. Wolves might have one more try for a play before halftime. Trout's back to pass once again. He'll take it himself, and he's taken down. Jordan Divin dropped him on the play for a nice sack. Fourth down now. And the Wolves might just let the clock run out. IEP on top, 48-16, just in this first half alone. We'll be the end of the first half, ladies and gentlemen. IEP is up 48 to 16. We'll be right back. I fell in love with the campus, with the people, with my IUP life. See it for yourself. Visit us. Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Find your success. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them blue for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful I did everything right. I went to college, graduated with honors, but I'm just not getting to where I want to be. I need to get to the next level. What am I missing? Where are these people going? What, what do they have that I don't? 
how do I get that edge, that hands-on experience that will put me ahead of the competition? Graduate school at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. takes is one dreamer with passion, one person, and they hope in each of you that you might be that one who makes a longer lasting light bulb, who writes music for the ages, who reaches into the mind and discovers a new star and who can change the world of a fifth grader. We're gathered here to hope in you. Cause nothing ever gonna make this world better. If we don't start believing that love really, really, really is the answer, everybody join hands, cause it's time now. now. Spread the love, spread the love all over the world. Spread it all over the world. We have a job to do out here today. To be a winning team, you have to work like a winning team. My team depends on me. And my team is 50,000 strong. Looks like a lot of work's going into this. This is what it feels like to be part of a team. A winning team. The action team. The action team. Action team. Get in on the action at actionteam.org. Are you in? It's hard to explain. It just became home. There are hundreds of majors and programs, bachelor's degrees to PhDs, small classes and faculty that really get to know you.
said hi to you. Oh, we have so much to celebrate in Division II, but we're especially proud of our commitment to make a wish. Division II student athletes have led a 10 year initiative to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life threatening medical conditions. Nearly $3 million have been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple, because we care. When I was in high school, I didn't know where I wanted to go to college. But I did know I wanted a major with job potential, and a campus that felt like the right place for me. I chose IUP. I'm studying on a beautiful campus with great professors who focus on student success and 140 academic majors. I'm Megan Spangler. I study nursing. Find your success at IUP. We know you want family-friendly sporting events. Sporting events where you can be comfortable. And entertained in a positive environment. Watching great individuals and teams compete. With commitment, effort, and good sportsmanship. That's what the Division II Game Environment Initiative is about. Be a part of the excitement and find out why. These student athletes say with pride, I chose. I chose. I chose Division II. What does it mean to have a college degree? I can finish what I started. I can compete for my dream job. What does it mean to have an IUP communications media degree? I can get a promotion. I am going to be a leader in my community. What does it mean to get your IEP degree online? I can afford it. I'll have a mentor. I did it on my own time. Face to face, professor support when you need it at our North Point campus. Find out how easy it is to get your degree from IUP. Can I go to the sleepover? Lucy, I want you to promise me something. If there's any drinking, I want you to say, no thanks, not my thing. Mom. I promise you, your real friends won't care. Deal? I promise, Mom. They really do hear you. Did you pack your toothbrush? For tips on how to start the talk, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. A public service message from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. The brain is a remarkable organ. It's almost infinite in its capacity. Its ability to reach its full potential is limited by only one thing. The heart. For if the heart isn't fully engaged in what you're doing, if you have no drive, no passion, the brain will simply go through the motions. 
find your success at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. To compete for a championship in stadiums full with cheering fans and families, to give back, to say thank you for your support, to learn, grow, and prepare for the future. Ask any NCAA student athlete what they want, and this is what they'll tell you. Ask these student athletes, and they'll say with pride, I chose Division II. Thank you. Mm. You make me feel coming. so young. You make me feel so spring has sprung. <laughs> and every time I see you. You're not fooling anybody, you know. <laughs> Think young. Pass it on. <laughs> a message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Ever since I can remember, I have loved theater and I have loved acting. I also have a passion for working with kids with special needs. Indiana University of Pennsylvania helped to make both of my dreams come true. I'm Trisha Ray Stahl. I'm a 1998 graduate of IUP, and I'm a working actress. I have a recurring role on Fox Television's Glee, and I also work with kids with special needs. IUP, find your success. You! 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 Your fault. You! Uh, my fault? Your fault. Uh, your fault. You're right. What? It's my fault. What do you mean, your fault? You're right, it's my fault. We can make it Maybe both of us? Maybe just you. Many penalties. No, we got to stop that. Well, outside the score the way it is right now, what's your plan for the second half? Well, we're going to play play our twos, and we got to just play football. You know, I told the guys that what they do out there on film, that's their resume. You know, whether you're a two or one or whatever you are. Who's going to be your starting quarterback in the second half? Probably the ball. Probably Mike the ball. Good luck in the second Thank half. You. Good luck, coach. Thank you. Back to you guys. And welcome back to George P. Miller Stadium. The score of this game with first Cheney is 48 to 16. You heard it straight from coach. We will be seeing a lot of the number twos, but we are going to play some replays of the first half to get you all caught up. Yeah, Mike, 48 16 just in this first half here. We see some big plays from the highlights. And IUP will kick off to the Cheney Wolves. 48-16, IUP on top. Into the second half we go. Sean Bowling kicking off. Ran.
Ransom back to receive. Fields it at the one-yard line. And he is rocked. 11-yard line. Zach Kelly with a huge tackle there, dropping him at the 11-yard line. Jeez. First and 10 now. Trout still on the field. No personnel change yet for the Wolves. Trouts with twins. Back to pass. Gives it to Kearse. Finds the pocket between three defenders. And that's a first down. Trouts with... Devin Miller now in the game. Tight end. Two slots. Gives it to Miller. Miller nowhere to go. Dondra Tillman on the stop. The big man we just saw him with his first touchdown interception right before we left for halftime intermission. Yeah, big play by Tillman. I think it looked like he knew he had the ball, but came down with it and walked right in the end zone. Second and 11 for Trouts. Trouts back to pass. Looking for number 29. 20. He breaks a tackle. Anthony Davis, from Anthony went, Davis. For, went for the feet, couldn't quite get him down. Number 29, Zaire Bryant, good play, getting out of the tackle. Number 68, Justin Weldon is coming out of the game. Incoming number 94, Jordan Divin. First and 10. The 44-yard line for Trouts. Trying to get a new play for his offense. Miller behind Trouts. Gives it to Miller. Miller up the middle. He gets nowhere. Can I Crimson Hawk wall right there? Jordan Divin making the stop. Second and eight. Trouts with twins along with the tight end. Back to pass. Trouts. Throw in deep for Curse. Couldn't find anything this time. Covered by Eric Doe and J.R. Stevens. And with Mike Petropola in there. Tillman will come out. Third down now for the Wolves. Third and eight. Wolves couldn't really get anything started. No tight end for Trouts. Trips to his right. Back to pass. Looking over the middle. Number 14, Rakeen O'Lear. Could be a first down. Number 22, J.R. Stevens on the stop. Looks to be a third and one, fourth and one. Fourth and one for the Cheney Wolves. Defense going man. Number 11 moving to the left side of the field, Nigel Wiley. Stacked twins, both sides. Pitches it out. And he goes nowhere. Couldn't get up the field. There's that man, DeAndre Easterling. 
Turnover on downs, putting up great field position for quarterback DeBaugh. Lenny Williams will come out for the second half. DeBaugh now in. Good seeing some young players. Yeah, backup quarterback Mike DeBaugh, number 14 from Baltimore, Maryland, six foot five. DeBaugh against some height in that quarterback position. First and ten. The ball gives it to Justice. Justice keeps moving those legs. And yeah, Mike DeBaugh has a laundry list of accolades from high school in his senior year, passed for over 2,000 yards, 20 touchdowns. He ranked the sixth by Rivals.com, their annual, the top 15 quarterbacks in Maryland. Wow. He was chosen by the Baltimore Ravens as their champion athlete of the week, named to the Maryland All-League football team in 2010. He was named to the first team All-Division in 2010. Jeez. Justice Evans again on the run, moves the chains. Not to mention, he was named the, the team MVP in 2010. He was named Perry High School Rookie of the Year in 2010 and named to the All-Country Team in 2011. So yes, Mike DeBaugh does have some experience behind him. DeBaugh, young player, but looks like there's some good experience on the way for him. Learning from Lenny. Malik Anderson on the run. And DeBaugh is actually a redshirt senior. That's, that's my fault on that. Thought he was a freshman. Definitely Since, not a young guy. <laughs> seen so much action from Lenny these past few years. I mean. One of the old Wiley vets in the locker room, I would say. Yeah. Second and eight for DeBaugh in his offense. Devin Atland to his right, as well as Mike Williamson. DeBaugh fumbles the snap. Took his eye off it. Looked like it was intended for Malik Anderson. Not the way you want to see your first game action for DeBaugh bringing up third down and long. Yeah, very long. <laughs> I'd say 17, 16. Yeah, nearly 20 on that. DeBaugh now. Trips to his right. Malik Anderson to the left on his sidecar. Back to pass. Looking for a target. Too short. Intended for number 15. Number 19, Miles Williamson. I follow him. I couldn't see the numbers from up here. Punning team coming onto the field. Number 35, Nico Ruiz. Fourth down, back to receive two punt returners for the Wolves. I'm going to bring on the Trouts, possibly personnel change. High punts from Nico. Number three, John McDonald Horner. Not expecting that one to jump right in front of him. Yeah, he needs some vision on that, but still IUP on top, 48-16. Ball on the 20-yard line. Trout's still in the game. First team defense still in for Crimson Hawks. First and 10 for Trout's. Setting curse in motion. Trout setting it up for almost a wide receiver screen, but almost intercepted by J.R. Stevens. J.R. Stevens' second almost interception on the game. <laughs> Got to catch on to that one, kid. Got to make that catch. Yeah, J.R. Stevens had a muffled one in the first quarter, and, and there's another one in, in the third quarter. Maybe third time's a charm for J.R. Stevens. Third time is always a charm. <laughs> 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 
Second and 10, gives it to Trouts. Trouts gives it to 22. That's Miller, Devin Miller. Dondra Tillman on the tackle again. Man's getting a big workout in today. Third and nine for the Wolves. Nine minutes to go in this third quarter. Trouts, third and nine. Back to pass for Trouts to the sideline. That's Curse. Pass completed to Joel Lewis Curse. D backs. Nice play. I think it was incomplete, but it's completed. Yeah, Trouts got crushed <laughs> on the field by Tillman. And a yeah, but, good. but he got the pass off, so. Yeah, he got the pass off. Good play. I mean, And a first down for the Wolves. Ten seconds on the game clock. Trouts with trips. Two on the game clock. Gives it off just in time. Gives it to Miller. Fakes it to Miller. He'll take it himself. Got a six-yard gain on that from Trouts. There's that man Easterling again. DeAndre Easterling on a tackle. And yeah, no personnel change for the Wolves yet. The lights are coming on here at George P. Miller Stadium. Wide receiver screen to 29. That's Zaire Bryant. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, J.R. Stevens couldn't make the tackle. Petra Pole couldn't make the tackle. But there's old reliable Max Redfield coming in to get the player out of bounds. Max Redfield transfer from Notre Dame to IUP. A little bit from South Bend to Indiana, Pennsylvania. Seven minutes in this third quarter. Trout's back to pass. Looking for the slant. That's Nigel Wiley looking for a flag on that. Max Redfield, the senior from Mission, uh, excuse my pronunciation, Mission Vejo, California. Yeah, works right. Max Redfield from California. He looks like it. He has that big wavy hair. <laughs> looks like California kind of kid. <laughs> I'm sure he's not used to this weather out here. I'm sure it's a lot nicer down in Cali. Oh, this is like winter to them. <laughs> Second and ten. Trout's back to pass. That almost intercepted once again by Max Redfield. Come on, man. Come on, Max. You know, Vinny, if I, had, if I had a dollar for every time we said almost <laughs> interception today, I'd have five bucks in my pocket right now. <laughs> there should be a hashtag. Max Redfield, interception. Almost. <laughs> almost. Get Max Redfield, interception. Third and ten for Trouts. Spread trips now. Mike, get outside, Mike. Get outside, Mike. Roll out for Trouts. Almost in the hands of another defensive back for the Crimson Hawks, J.R. Stevens. I'll tell you what, it looked like that time, 29, Zaire Bryant was trying to play defense, trying to get J.R. Stevens some not intercepting the ball because that was going right to him. <laughs> Gave yes. J.R. Stevens a nice little bump there. There's IEP defense. Playing really well, pretty dominant all game long. And in the coming games, we have Edinburgh next week. And then for the homecoming game, we have Cal here. 
broadcasted by ESPN3. Fourth down for the Wolves. High snap, passes the punter. McNeil trying to pick it up, trying to pick it up into the end zone. She's trying to, someone's trying to get it in the end zone. Don McNeil. Don McNeil ends up with it. That could be the third <laughs> touchdown. He's got the hat trick, folks. Don McNeil, congratulations. Three touchdowns His on the day. Second blocked punt touchdown for the day. What a special teams player. This is a night, an afternoon, this young man will not forget. <laughs> but uh, I wasn't really a fan of how many times it took him to pick it up. Get it the first time, young man. Yeah, I gotta say, he looked like he's playing soccer. He looked, he's, looked like he's uh, Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo out there. But he came down with it in the end zone. That's all that matters. Six soccer points on the board. I appreciate that one. Dylan Sark on the field to maybe make it a, to make it <laughs> 55 to 16. Crimson Hawks, and there are flags on the field. Uh, flag on the defense, I think. Too many men in the huddle, I believe. And Sarka, extra points. Low snap, but Dylan Sarka puts it through the uprights, making it 55 16. IUP on top. IUP had great special teams today in the game. I mean, we had a block pump from Dom McNeil, scooped and scored, and once again, high snap against Cheney, and it led to Dom McNeil another touchdown. So, congratulations, Dom McNeil. Great game today, and special teams all around fantastic for the IUP Crimson Hawks. Yeah, it's been a great game all around for the Crimson Hawks. A couple defensive touchdowns, have over 129 total yards rushing in the game. Lenny Williams ends the day with 10, he was 10 for 14, 169 yards, two touchdowns. Just fantastic. I mean, it has to be a strenuous job today for Cheney head coach. Got killed last week against California. And now they're getting killed this week against IUP, so. Doesn't bode well for Cheney. And it could be 9-0 now, all time against Cheney for IUP. Sean Bowling with the kick. Received at the three yard line. Few missed tackles, resulting in a 15 plus yard gain on the return. Number 45, the Andre Falk on the play. Trouts, and actually change of personnel and quarterback number one, Anwar Nasser Mathis. Now in the game for the Wolves, that quarterback. Making it first and 10. Number 52, Zach Weaver is checking in. 43 is Cameron Gray at cornerback. Mathis threw it straight into the ground right there. Trying to get something happening, but too much pressure from the IUP defense. Mathis was in, a, was in for a snap last, for, in the first half for Trouts. Trouts was roughed up by Tillman and Easterling. Yeah, it was not a good day <laughs> for Dominic Trouts. It's Devin Miller. Run by Devin Eric Doe is the first one to get a touch on him. Good play by the Crimson Hawks defense. Number 94 is slow to get up. It's Jordan Divin. Had a little bit of a head collision with his own teammate. Trains will check him out. Third down for Mathis. Double twins. F roll out for Mathis. Mathis just run out of bounds. That 
That'll make it fourth down. Punt team coming out for the Wolves. Punt return team coming in for the Crimson Hawks. Petropola back to try and make this catch. Mike Petropola, Mr. Reliable on punt and kick returns. <laughs> hey, he hasn't put the ball on the ground once. That's one thing I've noticed. But it does look like the Crimson Hawks are going to try to bring pressure this time. And the punt is up. It's high. Fair catch called. Crimson Hawks will field it at the 38-yard line. Talk on the field, flag on the play. Roughing the punter, possibly. We'll go down to the zebras and check it out. First down for the Crimson Hawks. Mike DeBaugh coming back out onto the field. Redshirt senior. Justice Evans as well in the backfield. First and ten. Yeah, we, I, got, I got our guys out here. Miles Williamson as well. Hit the wide receiver position. Gives it to Justice Evans. Drops for a minimal game. I think that was about two or three right there. A run right up the gun. Three yards on the play. Zach Kelly as well in the game. Along with Noah Bertram at the hybrid tight end fullback. Second down for the ball. Gives it to Justice Evans. Evans up the middle, finds a few more blocks, going down the sideline. He has men in front of him. He's finding the blocks, reading the blocks, sense of vision, and he's in for the touchdown. Justice Evans. What a play by the young man, Justice Evans. He zigged, he zagged, he went all over the field. What a play by the true freshman, Justice. Yeah, he had great reads on the blocks from his wide receivers. Great blocks from the line. Fantastic play. Great moves on the feet. Led to the uh, end zone. Nico Ruiz now for the extra point. Nico with the extra point is good. 62 to 16, and we will be right back here to George Miller Stadium on your Crimson Hawks Sports Network. I chose Division II because athletes graduate at a higher rate. I can stay closer to home and be an important part of the community. I chose Division II because I can double major and take part in campus activities. I chose Division II because classrooms are smaller. Students have more time with their instructors. And I can compete for a national championship. I chose Division II for all these reasons and more. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose, I chose, I chose Division II. Two. And we're back here at George Miller Stadium with the Crimson Hawks leading the Cheney Wolves 62 to 16 in your third quarter 406 IUP getting ready to kick off with Sean Bowling. Sean Bowling been kicking off all game. A lot of touchdowns from the Crimson Hawks, both defense and offense alike. Four minutes, like you said, Mike, left to go in the third quarter to reach the final chapter of Cheney versus IUP. And that'll bounce in the end zone, making a touchback. Good kick by Sean Bowling. What a leg on that kid. That was, a, that was an impressive kick. 
And Mathis for the Wolves to come out. Not a whole lot of personnel. That change on the defense, it looks like. Sixty-two, sixteen. Now you pee on top. That half. I mean, it was forty-eight. It's forty-eight, sixteen. So, this Crimson Hawks team sure likes to score. <laughs> think it's one of their hobbies. You think? Yeah, I'd hope so. <laughs> Mathis I mean, now can't win games. He don't score points. <laughs> Mass will take it himself. Couldn't go anywhere. Wrapped up in the backfield. Dondra Tillman again. What hasn't this kid done today? Stopped him. Stacked the quarterback, I believe, twice. Interception. Ran for a touchdown. He's done everything. Dondra Tillman. Second down for the Wolves. Double twins. Curse in motion. Mathis back to pass, looking for Curse. Curse, it's a little bit too high for him. Anthony Davis on the coverage there. Third down for the Wolves. Mathis getting some reps for Cheney. Third and 11. Back to pass. Looking for Joyner. Joyner gets it. Few big hits. Slow to get up. Brings it up fourth down. Number 30, Maurice House was on the stop along with Petropola and DeAndre Falk. Petropola going back to receive the punt. Punt team for Cheney hasn't been looking too good today. Block one, punt, one, high one snap. One block, one almost, almost block, two total. That's something I'd be too excited about to go over and film. Petropola, fair catch, ball to the ref, and the Crimson Hawks will take over on downs. DeBaugh looking to come in. Justice Evans as well. <laughs> Justice and Evans, 94 yards on the game so far on only seven attempts, two touchdowns. Too bad. Too bad, Justice. Malik Anderson in the backfield now. And first and ten. Gives it to Malik Anderson. Malik Anderson is hit hard in the backfield. Went right through the hole. Samuel Anajulu on the stop there. Number three. A four-yard loss for the Crimson Hawks. Second down for DeBaugh. Two tight ends in on the offense. Slots on both sides. Gives it to Malik Anderson. Anderson... Couldn't find anywhere. Third and ten for the ball on his offense. Let's see if the ball can get a couple passing completions here. Yeah, I want to see how he does in passing. Oh, for one on the day. Yeah, plenty of time to see that. One twenty-two left to go in the third quarter. Third and ten. Gives it to Malik Anderson, and the defensive line just walks right through the Crimson Hawk O-line. 
number 45, Devin Jones, there on the stop for the Cheney Wolves. Yeah, next week, IUP has Edinburgh. And the rest of the season, 27th season for the Crimson Hawks. We have the Gannon Knights in two weeks. And then after that, we have Cal for the homecoming game here at George P. Miller Stadium. Ruiz with the punt. Oh, muffled punt. Max Redfield finally coming up with the turnover. <laughs> Max Redfield maybe not getting the interception again, but he comes up with the fumble. You know, what can't Max Redfield do? Yeah, then he next week, Edinburgh, then IUP. Then Seton Hill. Then IUP travels to play our guy, the quarterback from the Great White North, Christian <laughs> Strong of Seton Hill. We you know, the Seton Hill Griffin's not having the best year, but man, I've been paying attention to that kid. He can throw the ball. Started watching him last year when they played IEP, and he created played a great game. It's a shame he, the Griffins aren't doing much better this year. Yeah, Christian Strong. Pretty good athlete for the Seton Hill Griffins. I mean, he's one of the best on the whole entire roster there, but we have Malik Anderson turning up the Jets. But you know who else is a great athlete? Malik Anderson. Malik Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> is in fact a great athlete. Malik Anderson along with Justice Evans making the most of their opportunity here at the tailback position in the second half. And Cheney timeout. And it's IUP versus Cheney. IUP on top. 62 16. We'll be right back here on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. I fell in love with the campus, with the people, with my IUP life. yourself. Visit us. Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Find your success. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful Penalty on the offense. And Mike DeBonis' offense moving back just a wee little bit. First and goal. Gives it to Malik Anderson. Anderson gets some good moves. Samuel and Ajulu on the stop there. Yeah, Malik uh, ran to a knee of one of the one of the Wolves went down pretty hard. Second and goal. Mike DeBaugh on the offense. Gives it to Malik Anderson once again. Dragged down just about the three yard line. That is Malik Anderson. So far in the game, he's right around 60 yards. Samir Bullock, seven rushes, 65 yards. Justice Evans, seven rushes, 94 yards. Third and goal. Third and goal from Mike DeBaugh. Both tight ends in the game. The 
the ball and gives it to Malik Anderson. Malik couldn't get the end zone. Will be stopped just shy of the two yard line. That is Malik Anderson. What will happen? Will they keep the offense on the field for fourth down or will they send in Dylan Sarka? Looks like they're going to send in Mr. Sarka. They're going to send in the golden toe of Dylan Sarka. The Sarka saga continues here in Indiana. <laughs> Sarka saga. Sarka seems like the uh, the cavalry for the Crimson Hawks. Scoring offensive. And the offense can't do it. Hey, it's in Sarka. Sarka with a field goal, making it 65-16. That kick is good. IUP averages 55.5 points for the past four shutouts. You know, this isn't, isn't a shutout, but I will take 65. I'll take 65 points. Yeah. I'm maybe looking for 70. I'd like to see 70. That'd be pretty interesting. I think 80 would be fun. Maybe 80? You think that? I mean, IUP's on a win streak so far. Let's look at the upcoming schedule. They're away at Edinburgh. They're coming back home for Seton Hill on the September 30th. IUP's home next week against Edinburgh. <laughs> away versus Seton Hill and home versus Cal for a huge PSAC West matchup. I'm sorry, everybody. It was Mike's turn to talk. Got a little offended. So <laughs> let him take over. 12.49 left to go. Anyway, upcoming schedule for the IEP Crimson Hawks. Not too worried about Edinburgh. Not too worried about Seton Hill. Worried about California. Yeah, Cal's always the big game up here in Indiana. Cal, Slippery Rock. Those are the two games you really need to watch out for, except for last year, where we did a number on Slippery Rock, but that can go either way every single year. Yeah, we're at Slippery Rock's at home <laughs> for their homecoming. Oh, is that their homecoming? It is. I did not know that. That will be an interesting game, because mm -hmm. we beat them on, their, or on our homecoming last year pretty good. <laughs> Let's see, see a big win, though, against in their home territory. Love that, to see it. And that was a good night, I must say. <laughs> I mean, because the Hawks won. Hawks, a W against Slippery Rock. What more could you want? First and 10. A new quarterback is in. Number 12, Justice Jacobs. Justice, back to pass. Scrambling. And he'll get about three, four yards on the play. Like, I just want to apologize once again for the graphic, man. This is your time. I should have realized it. You know, Vinny. My mistake. You, you, you said the schedule wrong already a couple times today. I just feel like I need to come in and explain to the you audience. You just need to save that. me. You I just I need to save, save you sometimes. You know, everyone needs a little assist there. You know, it's like hockey. You know, you got to get the assist to get the goal. <laughs> the assist. Something you don't see in football too much. Oh, huge hit by Tillman. Pretty sure that was Tillman on that hit. Yes, it was. The big man, DeAndre Tillman. Out there doing work. Tillman had a pick six today. I don't know. If you're up for me, I would definitely vote him IUP Athlete of the Week. Incredible player today. Huge stops. But then again, we have McNeil making three touchdowns on the day today. Two on special teams, one on offense. Stack trips for Justice. Back to pass, dropping back. Incomplete. Intended receiver number 14, Joaquin O'Lear. Fourth down, punt team will come on to the field. Three and out for the Wolves. Petropola back to receive the punts. Good old Mikey P back there to get this one for the team. Very short kick. 
Pechpola waves for the fair catch. The Crimson Hawks will take over with Mike DeBaugh. Malik Anderson in the game. Coming to the first and 10. Looking for Mike DeBaugh. Uh, converts for a touchdown today, Mike. Looking for a pass touchdown for Mike. I'd like one. I definitely would like to see Mike DeBaugh use his arm. I understand, you know, you're up 49 points. 49 points. But, uh, you know, go, go let the young man play a little bit. Go out there, you know, toss the ball around. Toss the ball around. Feel out his personnel. Justice Evans evading a few tacklers, wrapped up for a gain of one. And I would like, I'm sorry, Vinny, I would, no, li I would like to see Justice Evans break the 100-yard mark. He is at 96, I believe, the two-yard gain. Oh, yes, without that a doubt. That would be neat. Good celebration game for Justice Evans with the win along with a 100-yard game. 10.46 left to go in the game. Mike DeBaugh trips, hands it off to Justice Evans. Evans keeps plowing those legs. It's a first down. And a 100 yards for just seven. Congratulations to the young man for getting his first 100 yard game of his career. You know, Vanessa had deja vu. It's like I was saying that last week for another freshman running back, <laughs> Dwayne Brown, who got his first 100 yard game of the season. And that is the IUP thing, running the ball. That's yeah. how you keep control of the clock, run the ball, make your points. Run the ball down the throat of Cheney. First and ten. Justice Evans at sidecar. Gives it to Evans. Evans trying to push through the pile. Just wrapped up. Malik Anderson will now come into the game. Evans will come out. Mike DeBaugh with Zach Kelly, Devin Altland, along with Miles Williamson. Can't forget about Ryan Otto, the hybrid tight end player on the left side of the line of scrimmage. Otto, number 49. Second down for Mike DeBaugh, gives it to Malik Anderson. Malik Anderson trying to find somewhere to go. Halfway to the first down marker. Nine minutes in the fourth quarter. And Malik Anderson just passed up Samir Bullock on the rushing yards for today. Malik Anderson also having to double the touches Samir Bullock had. Bring up third down. Gives it to Malik. Fourth down. <laughs> Looking at punts, possibly. Yes, they are. Crimson Hawk punt team coming on to the field. Nika Ruiz and squad. I haven't seen too much of the punt team today. The punt coverage team, though, we've seen a lot of that, and they've been <laughs> outstanding. Nico with the punt. Fair catch signaled. Fair catch by Joaquin Oliver. And here comes the Crimson Lux defense back out onto the field. Less than eight minutes to go. IUP 65, Cheney 16. And Justice Jacobs in that quarterback for the Wolves. And uh, running back, number 34, Marcus Sullivan. Give it to Sullivan. He's wrapped up right at the line. 
And number 51, Kwame Wright Downing. <laughs> Second and two for Jacobs. Now in the backfield, number 83, Terrell Branch. Back to pass, Jacobs going deep, hit hard as he comes down with it. Reception of for first down. So it's 23, that's Brandon French at running back with Jacobs. Yeah, 23, Brandon French, haven't heard much from him today. He's, he's technically a starter on the depth charts. That's no, true, no. I, haven't, I haven't seen a whole bunch. Not getting into the game. Justice, first and 10. Quick out pass. Destin Number Brown. 17, Destin Brown. Has the reception. 6.30 in the fourth quarter. I think the Crimson Hawks have to be on their third team defense by now. Seen a lot of different players out there. Gives it to gives it to French. Dropped just before the first down line. Third and one. Yeah, third one. Six minutes in the game left. You yeah, haven't seen, like you said, Mike, I haven't seen a whole bunch from French. He was he is a starter on the depth chart. It's interesting why he hasn't been involved too much. Man, third and one. See if the Crimson Hawks can hold him. Gives it, actually, Jacobs will take it himself to the outside. Good fake to French. Getting that first down for Cheney. Justice Jacobs, first and 10. New set of downs. Twins to his right. And back to pass, looking for a target, delivers. Just outside of the reach of John Donald Horner. And second and 10. Second and 10 for the Wolves. Jacobs with twins to his right. And gives it to French, but French is just wrapped up and brought behind a lot of scrimmage by five yards. Jeez. Number 51, Palmer right down and dropped him on the play. Third down and 11? No, more like Oof, 14. Like, yeah. <laughs> 14, 15. French, back to pass, but Tillman wraps him up. Almost a horse collar, but Tillman wraps him up cleanly. DeAndre Tillman, wow. That kid did come to play. I'm very impressed with the way he's performed. Fourth and long, bring it up to the punt team for Cheney. Less than four minutes to go in the game. Back to receive is Justice Evans. Tayhunter Tillman, seven tackles, three sacks, 
one interception. One touchdown. And a touchdown. <laughs> Fair catch by Evans. And here comes Mike DeBaugh and crew. Mike DeBaugh, I want to see a pass from you. I want to see what you can do, Mike. And right here we have the game comparison graphic. So far, the Crimson Hawks outrushing the Cheney Wolves 169 to 22. Cheney is outpassing Crimson Hawks 287, 238. First downs are very close. Penalties only 36 yards for Cheney, but the Crimson Hawks are leading and total yards 407 to 265. And they're leading the only stat that matters, the score, 65 to 16. That was Justice Evans on the run. Yeah, Cheney, negative 22 <laughs> rushing yards. That's something you see every day. Definitely an interesting stat. Second and eight, Justice Evans getting the handoff again. Again, it's Justice Evans. Third down. 2.40 to go. Less than 2.30. Third down for the Crimson Hawks. Two tight ends for Mike DeBaugh. Gives it to Evans. Evans to the outside. Finds a few blocks. Made one move. Couldn't make the second move to get the first down. Bringing up a fourth down for the Crimson Hawks. Two minute drill on the way for DeBaugh. Fourth and one. Maybe DeBaugh and squad will stay. They're staying out. Hopefully picking up this fourth and one. Yeah, going to go for it. Hard count by DeBaugh. Timeout. Yeah, I mean, there aren't many players that can do that hard count. Very, <laughs> very few. Even in the NFL, there are very few players who can make that work. And we'll be right back here with the IUP versus Cheney on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. I did everything right. I went to college, graduated with honors, but I'm just not getting to where I want to be. I need to get to the next level. What am I missing? Where are these people going? What, what do they have that I don't? How do I get that edge, that hands-on experience that will put me ahead of the competition? Graduate school at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. And fourth down for the Crimson Hawks. You're here looking at the final minutes for IEP versus Cheney, 123 left to go. IEP up 65 16. Nico Ruiz back to punt. Cheney back to return. Nico with the punt. Fair catch. And 116 to go. The Wolves might just take a knee and call it the end of the game, but we'll find out. And first and 10 for Justice Jacobs. No 
victory formation for the Wolves. Gonna make the best of the last minute. And a tackle for a loss. Number 51, Kwame Wright Downing on the play. On the rush is Marcus Sullivan. Second and 15, less than a minute to go. Six seconds remaining in this game. Justice Jacobs, second along. Muffled snap. Sullivan will cover it. We couldn't get anything out of it. And that could bring up the last play of the game. Sorry. Whistle on the play. That's Tillman. He's fine. Get up. We need you, big guy. Walk her off. Oh yeah, Tillman's fine walking off on a, walking off on his own power. Nineteen seconds remaining. No stopping of the clock. Six seconds to go, and I think they'll just let the clock roll leading to an IUP victory, the third one of the season, 3-0 for IUP, 65-16. Cheney falls to the IUP Crimson Hawks here at George P. Miller Stadium. <laughs> and we will be right back here with an interview with Coach Tortorella. Be sure to stick around here on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. They know that all it takes is one dreamer with passion, one person, and they hope in each of you that you might be that one who makes a longer lasting light bulb, who writes music for the ages, who reaches into the mind and discovers a new star and it can change the world of a fifth grader. We're gathered here to hope in you. It just became home. 
There are hundreds of majors and programs, bachelor's degrees to PhDs, small classes and faculty that really get to know you. Amazing internships and everywhere, programs that help to find a job that is right for you. It's what IUP is about, a commitment to your success. See it for yourself. Visit us, Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Find your success. Coach interview on the sideline with Coach Tortorella. He's now 3 0 on the 2017 season, bringing it back to Emma McCarthy for a sideline reporter. First of all, congratulations, game number three. Uh, it's kind of a sidebar issue. A couple of games this year, there's been some problems on kick coverage. That seemed to be handled quite nicely today. I assume you've been working on that a lot? Yes, I mean, every, every week we're trying to address things we don't do well that week. I mean, we, we got a lot of things to work on. Uh, we didn't play very good in the first half. We got to play cleaner. Too many penalties, uh, too many mistakes on defense. Uh, we'll get it addressed and get ready for next week. Let me uh, give this to you an academic reference. This is an academic institution, so grades matter. How would you grade the offense from an A through F today? Well, uh, you know, that's hard to do. I know that's not what you want to hear. I mean, uh, you know, at times we were really good, but, it, you know, in the first half we, we weren't as efficient as we need to be. I mean, when you look at the score, uh, I don't know as many points. We, we scored three times on defense with uh, special teams and on defense. So it, it wasn't like we lit it up on offense today now. Well, the slow start, uh, I'm sure that frustrated you. Uh, why? What, what, was there an issue of uh, not game prep so much maybe, but was there a, a, a psychology that this is changing and we don't have to start the game hard? No, because we, we addressed it. We wanted to come out and, and really play well in the first quarter. We made a uh, big point of that this week uh, and we end up playing the last six or seven minutes of the first quarter a lot better but the first seven or eight minutes we weren't very good anything specific that you want to work on this week that you care to talk about I mean we got to work on everything <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me for laughing it's the old coach thing we never do anything perfectly and you have a lot to work on coach nonetheless thanks for your time uh, again another good win uh, no matter what the conditions, a win is a win is a win. But the competition ramps up over the next four or five weeks. Oh, absolutely. We're going into our conference now. Edinburgh's a good football team. I mean, they, they were 9-2 and two last year. Uh, and then, you know, every week it's going to be a battle. Thanks again, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Back down to her in the Ojo Tillman. Feels so good. I don't know if you know your stats, and I'm not, I don't want to quote them right now because they're pretty substantial. I'll make the uh, uh, mistake with them, but you had a no number of tackles just all over the field today. What was your objective personally in this contest? Uh, it was just a normal game. Uh, all week we've been working hard to get this W, and there's nothing different. It's just a regular football game. Just come out here and try my best. Uh, but your best today was, was excellent. That's why you're here after the game. Anything you did differently today from the prior games? Um, Nothing really, no. Just kept playing ball like I know how to. How much of your job assignment is fast rushing? Is that a, a dominant thing or is just what are the normal parts of the routine? Uh, that's a dominant thing. We try to work on that the most. Um, that's where I have to work on, putting the most work on my game so I can elevate my game and keep going further with it. Got to ask you, somebody who doesn't get the ball in their hands very often ends up in the end zone with the ball in his hands. How did that feel when you got there? I felt amazing, man. I Hopefully I get some more, man. As do we. Congratulations. Great game. Thank you. Thank you. I gotta ask you a question. Let's turn around so the camera can see you. Since when did they issue jetpacks for running backs? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Well, I know your, your buddy up in the booth, Mr. Benedict, said he's been extolling your virtues for a long time. You get the ball in your hands. If you're behind the defense, it's good night, Irene. You're going to the house. How did you feel today? Uh, I felt pretty good. Um, I felt pretty good going in. Treated my body right this week, so great time. You realize you scored more touchdowns today, by the way, in three different ways, more touchdowns than you have in your career up to this point? No, I didn't know, but I'm happy. <laughs> I'm definitely happy. Any one of the three feel better than the others? Uh, no, same touchdown. <laughs> what, do you, what do you view your role principally being within the offense? Uh, is there any specific category you put it in? Uh, um, we, they trust in everybody, so we're going to work. Well, the one thing that just absolutely screams at you when you watch you is that absolute blow away speed. And by the way, if you can find the guy that gave you the jetpack, how about bringing a few more to the team? Dom, thanks. You. Great game. Thank Great you, sir. Game. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Back to you.
Thank you, Emma, for the sideline report. This about wraps up IEP versus Cheney. Let's look at Don McNeil with that big old smile. Three touchdowns on the day. Congrats, McNeil. And IUP coming out on top, 65-16. I'm <laughs> Vincent Lau, your play-by-play -play commentator. Yeah, Vinny, doesn't get much better than that. Thank you for joining us. Michael Gribna, color commentator, have a great one. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Join us next week for IUP versus... Edinburgh. There we go, that's my boy. <laughs> at home at George P. Miller Stadium.